capacity. Yes. 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 Whip it. Yes. Whip it. Whip it. All right, everybody, stand up. Shake your, somebody's hand that you do not know. Make a friend. Say what's up. Introduce yourself, man. Make a friend. All right. How's everybody doing today? Very good. Well, I'm very excited to be here. Um, you guys, it's Friday night. There's a lot of places you could be instead of here. And there's money you could be making or people you could be hanging out with or spending time with your family. So you're here with me and listening to what I have to say. So I promise you I'm going to give you guys your money's worth. Um, I've been training, uh, doing this for about 15 years now. By show of hands, who's familiar with some of my work? A couple guys. If you're not, uh, go to Instagram. It's Danny Pessy. I've spelt it on my shirt because so many people misspell it. And if you misspell this last name, you're going to end up with a very different Danny Pessy, let me tell you. Do not pay for their OnlyFans. It's a trick. Okay, my friends. Yes. Very unfortunate. So I. I and I have, my brother's name is Harrison, nicknamed Harry, so as you guys can imagine. <laughs> as you can imagine, we were the uh, brunt end of a lot of jokes growing up, so it makes sense why I'm a door-to-door -door solicitor. So, um, with that being said, tonight I want to give you as much value as I can. I teach a lot of theory and a lot of principles that you can take out and implement immediately and start getting immediate results on the doors. And so whether you do phone sales, whether you're in person knocking doors, I wanna teach you guys some fundamental principles that you can apply to your business and implement immediately. So I have some prepared content that I've spent my full life doing uh, and practicing, and this is original content that I came up with at four levels of a deal to get a customer to say yes, that you guys can conceptualize and implement implement in your business. What I found is a lot of times sales reps, they're very natural and they're gifted and they can't grow more than themselves because they don't have a system that they can replicate. I'm going to give you guys a system that you can teach your recruits and teach people that you can bring on so that you can start replicating your process and spread your message to your, to your downline, to the people that you hire. Because the thing is, there's no such thing as success without successors. And write that down. That's your first nugget for tonight is you're going to learn this two ways. One way is from me teaching you right now. And the second way is you're going to teach this to your team and to people in your life. This technique can be applied to anything that you sell. And it's going to be a core fundamentals to your sales process. If solar disappears tomorrow, you can take these principles and apply it towards anything else. So I really want to make sure you guys understand, you know, these are like the, if you're going to be an NBA basketball player, these are the fundamentals. So with that being said, um, we're going to go through some of the training that I've got prepared. Um, we're going to go into answering a couple questions towards the end. So a Q and A, we know a lot of you guys probably have some questions and you'll have questions during throughout this process. So I challenge you to write them down and wait towards the end. A big hack, I've been to a lot of seminars, been to all the Grant Cardones, everything you can imagine. I've found that the most effective way to learn something is not having your phone out and being on 100% pen and paper. And this is my notebook that I carry with me everywhere. And I write physical notes. I have like eight to 10 to 15 of these things. Okay, and everywhere I go, I write notes and I use uh, a Mont Blanc pen. And the reason why I do this, this is a big hack for you guys, um, is Mont Blanc pens are designed when you go to sell, whoever's seen that movie Ford versus Ferrari? So remember when Ford goes to buy out Ferrari and they had the contract sitting out there? They dropped a pen on the table to sign. It was a Mont Blanc pen. And these are like the Rolls Royces of pens. And the reason why it's important to write down is, is especially in this industry, any nugget that you can get can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because the material that you can take from me tonight, you can implement and make money on the doors. Everything I talk to you guys tonight about is stuff that I've used and I've sold and I've made money on it. I've been doing this for 15 years, so this isn't like made up pie in the sky stuff. Like hopefully you guys have followed my journey for a long time. I started off as my first job I've ever done, knocking doors. I'm 32, I started at 18. Uh, made a couple million bucks doing it, but it doesn't matter what I've made, it's what I can help you make. 
And that's why I'm here tonight. I'm not here to brag about what I've done. I'm here to give you guys stuff that you can use and go out and apply and scale your business and make a good amount of money. And that's the, that's the big message that I'm here tonight is to give you guys as much as I can, give you as much as I can in a short amount of time. And uh, that's what I'd recommend. So if you do have a pen and paper, get one out. Let's take some notes. If you have someone else in the neighborhood of you, grab their pen, get a piece of paper from them. Because when you something about writing it, it registers in your brain more than writing it down in your phone because your phone has text messages, it has distractions. And the sh who can guess what the average attention span is in today's world? Seven seconds. And you guys are all leaders. You're all successful salesmen. You get blown up all the time. You're going to hear a nugget from me and then get a text message. You get distracted. It's going to go one in here and out the other, and you're going to forget about it. The point of today, tonight's meeting is not to work in your business. It's to work on it. And that's what we're doing here. We're sharpening the saw so that when you go out, you have a new bag of tricks to go out and get new income and get new deals. And so that's why we're here. We're here to get better so that you guys can utilize this stuff. And the best way that you're going to remember it is by being 100% focused and present. Because you're gonna hear one thing a night where you're like, shit, that's it. Hey, welcome guys, hello. You're gonna get one thing tonight that you're gonna hear and you're gonna be like, dude, I can use that and that's it. So listen for that, pay attention. The people on your phone that are texting you, they're gonna be here in an hour. Your customers, if they're gonna cancel, they're gonna cancel in an hour, okay? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Nothing you can do. And when I was out running teams, I would travel around the country, visiting offices, and who wags the tail? Does the dog wag the tail or does the tail wag the dog? Your phone's the tail. Do not let your tail wag you tonight. Be 100% focused. Get some nuggets. And this is, uh, let's, let's dive into it. So um, with that being said, this is a kind of a, a good little group where it's not too huge, where I can't um, control something. But I would like to challenge to see if you guys are open to it. Who would like to do um, a focus exercise before we begin? Do it. By a show of hands, who, who's, who's in to do a quick focus exercise that will help you retain more information? All right, cool. So I got a majority. So, so this might seem weird, um, but I challenge you to just try it, see how you feel. And if you don't like it, never do it again. This is. This is something that I would do um, every single meeting before I'd start or before I go on stage because attention and focus is one of the most highly valued commodities in today's marketplace because like we talked about, attention spans so quick these days, people's attention goes all over and you can't remember anything. So this is, you guys have all heard of the uh, breath teacher Wim Hof, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Wim Hof has a breath exercise that can help you stay focused and relaxed and get into a state where you can retain more information. The thing is, is you want information tonight, but if you're in a state where you're distracted, you're not focused, you'll get a lot of information uh, given to you, but it's not gonna register. So with that being said, I'd like everyone to just do a quick little stretch. And we're gonna do a, a quick breath work exercise. This is the perfect size group where it's not huge. And we can do it. Uh, uh. So if you want to get in control of your life, the first thing you want to start doing is getting control of your breath. Breath is the only thing that will be with you from the very first second of your life to the very end of your life. And if you don't have a relationship and you don't start controlling it, then it's gonna control you and you don't know how to control your emotions if, they're, if your breath is all out of whack. So this is an exercise to get to control of your breath and then we'll dive into it and uh, get it ripping, okay? So how we're gonna do is we're gonna sit up in your chair and I want you to pretend there's a string going from your spine all the way to the top of your head and then pull that string up, okay? Don't worry, everyone's doing it so if you look weird, it's fine. At least you don't have a big pessy on your shirt, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I like her. She's a good laugher. <laughs> Very good. So with that being said, let's put our hands lightly grasped, dropped on our lap. And what we're going to do is we're going to close our eyes. But before we do, watch how we're going to do this. We're going to take a deep breath in with our mouth. And we're going to pull our hands from our knees up to our waist. And we're going to exhale, pushing our hands out. Like that. Okay, sounds silly, sounds weird. If you don't like it, you'll never have to do it again. But if you do, you're gonna be hooked and you'll see why when we're done. Okay, so everybody understand the core fundamentals on how to do it? 
Nice. So let's go ahead and close our eyes and we're going to do a count of 20. Okay. So on me, one, two, three, inhale, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, big inhale, and exhale and hold on empty. And hold it for as long as you can on empty. Deep inhale in. Hold it. And when you're done, slowly exhale through a straw. And flutter your eyes and come back to the room. Mm. By a show of hands, who just felt that? Pretty cool, huh? So when you're stressed, come guys, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Oh yeah. So whenever you're stressed, you're overwhelmed and you need to focus, that's a great exercise you can utilize in any aspect. If you're out knocking and you're just getting slammed, go to your car, crank the AC, do a couple rounds of that. You guys will be in a whole different state. Now, if you guys can feel we're present, we're focused, let's dive into some content. And so we're gonna go into the four levels of the deal. And what this training is about is to give you guys levels that you can think of when you're in your sales process to see if you checked off. It's like going to the grocery store and you have a to-do list at the grocery store of things to buy, right? So, oh, Mr. Looney, how you doing, baby? Oh my goodness. There he is. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, give a hand for John Looney over there. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Grab a seat, grab a seat, Mr. Looney. Come on over here, you show off. <laughs> so, this is a checklist. A lot of times when sales reps go into the process or they go to start selling, they just start talking and hope the customer buys, right? So what I want you guys to do is have this checklist, a mental checklist as you're going through your process. These are different levels that you can check to see if you're gonna get a deal. All four of these are important. And if you don't hit these four, you're gonna wonder why you didn't get a deal. It always dials down to these four levels. So if you're not selling your deals, you sell them and they cancel, you're gonna realize it always comes down to these four fundamental um, practices. So the four levels of the deal, let's go into slide one. We just got our slides here, all good. Okay, so this is the lowest level and this is, there we go. This is the lowest level and one of the fundamentals is building rapport with the client, come on in, welcome, welcome. Yes, come, come friend over there, come join us. There is, there's a good enough chairs, yes. One of them has a whoopee cushion, so be careful. Yes. That's right, cool. So, all right guys, circle it in, tighten it up. So guys, with the four levels of the deal, the beginning one, which is the lowest, is rapport. You guys have heard about it. It's some weird word someone made up in like the 40s and 50s. Basically building a relationship with somebody, okay? It's building a relationship with the customer, making a friend. So you're in a process, let's say you're an introvert and you have a hard time connecting with somebody. The keys to building rapport with people, you can use this in two different situations right at the door when they open up or at the closing table after you've closed the deal. 
I personally don't like to go into too much rapport before they sign because they end up being able to let you down sooner by saying, hey, you're my friend, no problem, I'll call you when I'm ready. So you gotta know when to use this rapport and use it tactfully. I've always been a firm believer that if you wanna talk about the golden days, you're gonna to have to pay before you talk about the golden days. So you have gotta be my client before you can just start talking about all sorts of stuff that isn't really relative to what we're doing. So important to building rapport, you talk about their reality. This is the key to building rapport with somebody is you talk to something that's real, that is in the universe or a belief system that they have. Their reality comes down to two things, something physical in their home or an ideal ideology, ideology that they hold. So for example, if I had a client, and let's say this is my client right here, first thing I would do is what is something that I would wanna point out and start having a conversation. First thing I would wanna to do to build rapport with a client like this is, dude, that's a sick hat, man. Where'd you get that thing? Counters, there you go, man. So you ride a uh, so you cowboy or something like that, yeah. dude. Hell yeah, man. Very cool, sweet. So you start talking about things they have. Look around the table. Look around their house. If they have like a silly garden gnome, right when you knock on the door, start talking about those type of things to break their preoccupation. And so those are one of the big keys. The second one is you could talk about is is you could talk about ideologies. So if you notice that they support a certain political campaign or they support a football team or something like that, start talking about it. The Cowboys are huge out here, right? A major hack to build rapport with people is have a lanyard of the Cowboys. So when they come to the door, they see that, it's trustable. There's something that they see that you like, that you're a real person, that's a great way to build rapport. Every market that I would go to, I would have a lanyard with the sports team that everybody loved. So that's a huge hack that you could take immediately right off the bat is have something for the local sports team and talk about it. And so after you close the deal, you build a relationship with somebody. Typically no more than 20 minutes do you wanna spend after you close a deal talking to somebody because if you go on talking for two or three hours, you know it's gonna be one of those things, hey man, it was great hanging out with you, but I'm gonna cancel solar, but come to my barbecue next weekend. <laughs> Who's had that happen before? Raise your hand. Exactly. So that's why you can't depend on rapport to get deals. And that's why it's the lower tier of the pyramid of the four levels. So having a conversation with somebody, talking to them about stuff they like, cool. Instant, instant way for them to start liking you more is talk about something in their reality, okay? So the next level, when you start going up one more, is, let's go to the next slide, trust and, uh, trust and credibility. Very important as we start climbing up these scales to realize what that is. Slow, uh, low speed, low trust. High trust, high speed. That means they're gonna go through the sales process faster. You ever get referred to a client, she comes in and she's like, oh, hey, how much is it? Oh, it's uh, for what your biz, you do the proposal, 180 bucks a month, cool, sign me up. You've had those deals, right? Because the trust was high because she got referred to you. So if you go to a customer who's never heard you before, they just saw in the news that there was a murder happened from a door-to-door -door salesman, they're gonna move very, very slow. It's, tra it's crazy, it happens. So that's the thing, you gotta realize the slower that they move in the sales process, that means they don't have a lot of trust for you. So your job, how can you build trust right off the bat? There's a couple tricks that you can do that I found are very effective. A names list. So if I'm knocking on the door, you wanna build trust with the client immediately, you hand them a list of clients that you've set up or somebody else has sold in the neighborhood. So you come to the door and you hand them a list of 10 to 15 people in their areas with their names and addresses of houses that already have solar on their roof. You wanna build credibility, then they start looking down there and their neighbor that they know has solar that you happen to sell, How's trust in that situation? Higher. Boom. Goes up way higher. And so we're shooting ourselves in the foot by not using a names list. Literally within the first 30 seconds, I'm handing this list to the client. Hey, who do you know on this list? And I'm keeping it out. If I'm at a closing table and I'm a closer, I come in, the first thing I do is set on the table, boom. Here's 15 people that I've set up. Huge hack. And the cool part about it is, is you don't have to necessarily sell the client to have them on your name list. What I mean by that is you go up and have the conversation with the client, hey, how'd you like the solar panels on your roof? Great job, glad you're a customer of solar. Do you remember who you bought it from? Who remembers? 
Nobody. What panels did you get? Uh, the ones that turn the sunlight into electricity. <laughs> cool, we sell those too, man. <laughs> and we got a couple more in this neighborhood that we're doing. I'm gonna put you on our list, and if anybody buys that knows you, we're gonna come by and give you 100 bucks. Do you take cash or credit? That's the key right there. They start laughing. Of course they're gonna take cash. They can't take a credit card, they're civilians. So, you say that joke, right? Here's a perfect example. You get that name list, right? And then you start getting a video testimony from clients. As you go to the door, cool man, hey, before I take off, I wanna make you as much money as I can. You care if I do a quick testimony of your experience with solar? If they're good, do the video testimony. If it's bad, say, all right, sorry, better luck next time. <laughs> so I get a video testimony with them, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm like, all right, cool. So the key to doing a video testimony is you pull up your camera and you, you, you hit record but you don't do selfie videos, you do it this way. And the reason why you do it this way is so that if you guys wanna get crazy, you can take this video, and because it's tilted at this angle, you can put it on a Facebook ad and target the neighborhood you're knocking, and everybody that's on Facebook can see that video of you talking with one of their neighbors. You guys never heard that one before, huh? Sick, find a marketing guy, you can do it. So if you're gonna go knock this neighborhood, they can literally drop a geofence of two miles, everybody in that area is watching that video of you getting a testimony from your client. That alone right there is gonna turn heads like crazy. Next, get a good video. So I want you guys to watch, this is me in the turf, selling a customer, and this guy already had solar for two years. I didn't sell him, but I went up, started having a conversation with him, and I got a video testimony out of him, okay? So pay attention. Think about it. All right, so I'm here right now, I want you to introduce yourself, sir. Marcel Hale. Mr. Hale, what, what, what do you got in the back of your house right now? I've got 30 solar panels on my house. Man, yeah. so what was the main reason why you got those panels? Because of the expense. Because I couldn't have a AC unit in Toronto because my bill would have been probably 700 a month. And now I don't pay any electric bill. Plus, I've already got $350 credit built up in the grid, and I'll probably have $700 by the end of the year. Wow. So you're going to have a credit of $700? at the end of the year. No bill to Edison. No. Nothing. No. So would you say on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy were you getting the panels put on your roof? 20. 20. <laughs> That's Boom. Give it up for Arzell Hale, all right? <laughs> what does that do when you play that video from a cus for a customer who doesn't trust you? Trust goes up. Because did I tell them all those amazing things about solar? No. Arzell Hale did. <laughs> so luckily that was out of a cartoon and worked magnificently in the neighborhood I was selling. But that's the thing. Imagine, you think that's the only video I have? I have five, six, seven, all saved under my favorites. So when I'm with a customer who I know doesn't believe me, boom, video, boom, video, boom, video. Who's seen, uh, it, it's gone viral lately on Instagram of tagging their customers, talking about if the utility company knocked on their door and tried to switch them back to the Edison or switch them back to the utility company after going solar. You've seen it, yeah. You guys record that video after you sell a client and you text them that video, and then if they ever go to cancel, after saying, since shooting a video on, yeah, I would never go back to the utility company, F you, and I'll talk about the end, I'll give you guys an example, but then they go to cancel, you just put a big question mark by that video? Like, what are you talking <laughs> like, Bro, what are you talking about? So, I'll go into that after, but I don't wanna get too deviated from the four steps, but these videos, guys, if you're not using these, you're shooting yourself in the foot. How many reps are utilizing that on the doors every single day? Handing that to a, there you go. I did one today, so. And how did it work? Uh, it was pretty fire. Yeah. Um, it, it worked pretty good. Uh, it built stuff. Right off the bat, 100%. And it's like the neighbors selling solar for you. So. That's it. Because the thing is, is they don't know you, but if they see the neighbor, and you can point to him, hey, you know Arzell's house down the street? He's the guy that lives at this, boom, boom, boom. He's got the boom, boom, boom in front of his house. Yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, that's him. Oh, yeah, I do know that guy. Boom, trust shoots up super high. We got some chairs for the new guys coming in. Got, got some chairs over here, boys. You can, you can scoot on in over here. Oh, my gosh. 
There's our lead tech. There's Mr. Jolly, our lead technician. Nice to see you to join us. So playing videos in your initial approach and at the table to build trust and credibility with your client. Do you think your mother or father, if they were to buy solar from you, would need to do research or need to speak with their friends about it? No, they trust you. So how do you replicate that in the customer's mind where they feel comfortable doing it? You have to use a names list and you have to start referring to the neighbors and what better way to do that than with an actual video talking about it. And what's cool is, is you notice the questions that I asked the customer, those are the objections that you're gonna get in your next presentation. So if you have a customer that said, uh, for example, what's an objection you guys get typically if a customer doesn't wanna go solar? I don't like how it looks on my roof. Hey, Arzell, what was the main reason why you got solar, and do you care about the look on your roof? And then you're going to let your customer who already has it overcome that objection for you. So essentially, every objection you guys get, you can have a video tied to it of one of the people that have solar overcoming it. You want to start building trust with your people, that's the way to do it right off the bat. That's next level selling. You guys just go talk, 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 hope they buy it. You got to start getting creative. The market's getting more saturated. You guys know the bill that just passed? Yeah. 10 years more solar, baby, we ain't going anywhere. And what's going to happen is the realtors, the mortgage agents, the car salesmen, guess who's coming for us? So these aren't the competitors, guys. Whoever, whatever groups you guys are with, it's these new guys coming to the marketplace. So how do we beat them? We have to be more polished. We have to be more professional. We have to have more technique. And the thing is, is they're going to come in with their skill set, and they're going to be able to get results. So how do we up our skill set? We're making good money right now, but someone's coming for us, guys. These car sales and these mortgage agents. Do you guys know what the interest rates on a mortgage is now? So, yeah, it's, it's, the high, it's, one, it's super, super high right now. No one's refinancing houses. There's going to be a dip in the marketplace. Realtors aren't getting homes bought so, because so I will it's ask. Going to be a dip soon. Yeah, it's going to be a dip soon. And so the people that used to buy a house six months ago, their mortgage was going to be 4000 Now it's 8000 a month. You think they're going to go buy that house? No. no. So a mortgage agent ain't eating. What's he going to do? He's going to see guys like John Looney on Instagram flexing, making a million bucks a year. They're like, I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> so that's the thing. We got to get good. How are we going to separate ourselves? We got to have technique. We got to be polished. And do you think a customer is going to tell it by talking to them if you're polished or you're an amateur? 100%. That's why it doesn't matter if your neighborhood's been knocked. Neighborhood's not been knocked by you. Not been knocked by you. Amateurs. Car salesmen coming out trying to get a taste of the gold rush. They'll get lucky. But the polished, trained professional will win every single time because you guys now have the playbook, which is the four levels. You're building trust right off the bat. Nameless, videos. Another secret, articles. They don't believe what you say, but they'll believe what they read. People watch the news. Understand the people that we're selling to are middle class. They're good people. They watch the news. Do they believe the news? Not always. I mean, some people don't. But over a lot of people do. So use that. They've been programmed in their mind to believe what they see. Why don't we tap into that same psycholo uh, psychology? Psychology. I'm a sales, I'm a solicitor, okay? All right. Yeah, you guys suck a log a logally. All right. Whatever. Passy, okay? God, give me a break. So printing out an article. If you guys aren't going into Encore Turf and handing a client the article about them pillaging your clients in this last six months, you're shooting yourselves in the foot. Who knows what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Okay, the ones that don't, this is, this is a game changer for you. How much, Tanner, how much did they make? 60 mil or something. Encore on the last heat wave. John, was it 250 million? 229 million. 229 million. 229 million. Two, just last year. Last quarter. Last quarter. Last quarter. Just, so just really the summer months. I mean, it was a 70% increase, guys. So. I wait robbery. Legitimate. And guess what? But we're coming for it. Yeah. We're coming for it. That's right, Tanner. Give him, some, give him some water. He's getting a little excited over there. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So 
your job is to get them to believe what you're saying. And if you're saying that solar is the solution to their problems, which we'll, we'll get to in a second, you have to have some articles to back up your statements with facts. Handing them four or five, I don't know if you guys have seen the Knockstar Slicks, everybody's using them when you go to the doors, handing it, engaging it with clients. Printing out articles of your local utility company about them raising rates and pounding your clients, that's gonna get them pissed and they're gonna believe you and they're gonna remind you, okay? Because what's the solution to them getting destroyed on their utility bill? Solar. Us, exactly. They don't like their utility bill, can they just cancel it? No. It's not like a cell phone, ladies and gentlemen. It's not like cable television. They don't like it. You know what they do? Shut the lights off. Have fun. Good luck. They have no choice. So you start handing them articles. Hey, boom. Talk about the freeze. Who remembers the freeze that happened here two years ago? It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Guys, why do you think the government's spending all this money on fixing the grid and doing solar? Because it keeps crashing. Unreliable. Unreliable. <laughs> so many people. And with so many people moving from Texas, especially those California weirdos, <laughs> where is the extra electricity going to come from? Because they're not, they're not doing any coal mining anymore. They're slowing down on the oil fields. That's it. It's coming from us. That's the surface level. Here's some shit that's going to blow your guys' mind. You guys know how old the grid is? 100, 130 years old. Okay, more than that. You want to know how to take out America? Shut down. Solar. You wipe out the grid. That is the real reason why there's such a huge push on solar. China, no joke. They're coming for us. I don't know about with military, but with money. If you want to take out the United States, there's three grids. There's the West Coast, there's Central, and there's the East Coast. You take out the grid, we are effed in the A. That's why they're doing it. And right now they're being polite. They're gonna pay people to do it. They're gonna give them the tax rebate. They're gonna give them the credits. But there's gonna be a time where there's no choice. You're getting this shit on your roof. We cannot generate enough electricity. Because if they come and they wanna wipe us out, our grid is too old. You cannot fix this grid. You know how much it would cost to replace the entire grid across the country, all those poles? that are hanging from across the country to dig a, a trench and bury it with new conduit, you know how much that would cost? Trillions. Trillions. Your electricity bill would go from 300 bucks a month to 5,000. Can't do it. Done, no chance, sorry. Now, all they can do is put Band-Aids on it. They send a truck out there to fix it if it overfro, if it blows up, has a problem, boom. It's every, it's every winter. Dude, you freaking read my mind. That's every winter. Dude, get this girl a water bottle, baby. She's firing me. Give up something. Give up something. Go, baby girl. Look, give up something. It's every winter. It's mm -hmm. going to be bad this winter, too. That's Same it. Thing. So, guys, the surface level is, is when the grid goes down, people on life support, the old folks, they die. And it's sad. A lot of people died during the freeze. And that's the thing, that's why they're pushing this now. It's going to be a lot worse if we ever did get invaded by Russia or China and they wipe out the grid, it's going to be bad. So that's why they can't fix it because if those bills went to that price, people would be rioting in the streets. Couldn't do it. So that's why you see the progressional raise in your client's bill. It's not stopping. It's never going to stop. It's never going to go down until we make a difference. So having articles to back that up is one of the most important things you can do. And do you notice how serious I get when I talk about it and the conviction? Like, you guys are worried now, right? Mm -hmm. These are conversations I'm having with clients. You think anyone else is having these type of conversations with customers? No, shit's real, guys, and it's scary. I've done the research, I've studied it. Write this down, The Grid by Helen Bakey is the best book you can read on what the grid is. And this is the book that I learned and I listened to every single day going out to turf for my first six months in solar, because I'm going to tell you in a second, right here, Gretchen Bakey, it's called The Grid. This book, if you're reading motivational stuff, all that stuff, great, put it down, pick this up, hear it out three or four times.
because this is the stuff that's really going to move the needle for you. You're all motivated. You're here, right? What's your last name? Uh, B A K K E. Gretchen Bake. On audiobook. On audiobook. Yep. Driving out the turf every day. Boom. Over and over. Because you're really going to learn what problem you're solving, and that's what I'm going to get into next. So we've got the trust and build uh, trust and credibility. Let's go to the next slide. Urgency and takeaways. What can you do to make them make a same day decision? We've all been in the process where they're like, hey, I need to think about it. Oh, I'll get it later, right? So what can you do to make sure that these guys take action now and stop sleeping on it? Tell them Rick is going to go up. God, dude. They're going to get it right now. You go, Jess. One, right right, one, one more. Girl. <laughs> one more over here. So, so. She still sounds like shit. She needs a water. He's eating this Okay. So, this is the death spiral. This is something that you guys can talk about immediately with the clients. And it's an easy concept for you to remember. Who thinks they know what it is? All right. Check this, check this out. I am Encore. You guys are all my clients. I want to make a million bucks off you, so I disperse it evenly to every single one of you. You're all my clients. Mr. John Looney comes in, and he starts selling you guys solar. Now, as Encore, do I like John Looney coming in and stealing my customers? No. 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 Have you ever made money and then made less money the following year? Do you like it? No. So what do you do? You give discounts. You try to either get rid of Looney or you charge other people more to get your income back in. So Looney comes through, takes out half the room. I don't have them as clients anymore. What am I going to do to the other half of the room because I want to make a million bucks? Charge them up. The rates are going to go up. And then if there's five, ten people left, what do you think I'm going to do to them? Mess them over. Mess them over. So if you start explaining that to the customer, ask them, hey, where do you want to be on that death spiral? Do you want to be the last one or do you want to be the first one? Because the thing is, what's going to happen is you're going to end up, maybe 200 bucks a month isn't painful enough for you. When it gets up to 1,000, then you're going to be like, all right, let's do this. But do we want to wait till then? So if I, you guys start talking about the death spiral with the client, what did I just make that person want to do? Get it done quick. And if you guys don't believe me, I mean, who, I mean, do I have to sell you on the idea that that's true? You guys get it, right? That's what's happening. Why do you think the rates are going up? Because they're losing clients, inflation, the cost of doing business, the crews to go out to the people's houses to fix it. They're getting paid more. Costs a lot. It's 130, 130 degrees out here in Texas. It's hot as shit. <laughs> so it's expensive to get crews to go out there and fix this grid. I sold here in 2020, so I know how damn hot it is. So next, the death spiral. I'm talking about that. The longer you wait, man, the more it's going to cost you. And unfortunately, it's not a matter of if you get these, it's when. And that's what these last 10 people said. They didn't like the idea of solar. They didn't like the way it looked. They were worried about taking out a $50,000 loan, but they realized that it wasn't a matter of if they were going to get it, it was just when. So they bought the, they bit the bullet and got it over with rather than being the last guy standing and trying to prove a point. So let's not try to be that guy and let's go ahead and get this done before it hits you too hard. Another great line is, is there's an old Buddhist saying, when was the best time to plant a tree? This guy's good. Water bottle. <laughs> when, <laughs> when was the best time to build a tree? It was 20 or plant a tree. It was 20 years ago. Mr. Customer, when's the second best time to plant a tree? Right now. Right now. The sad part is, is how long ago did you buy this house? Eh, about 15 years, 15 years ago. If we would have done this 15 years ago, you'd have five more payments, five more years of payments, and you'd never have another electricity bill for the rest of your life. Fortunately, I don't have a time machine, but I'm here now, and there's never been a better time to get this going, so let's not kick yourself in the butt. And if you could talk to yourself 15 years ago and have a time machine, and you had an option to rent your power when you moved in versus ownership 
and you knew that in 20 years, as long as you made your payments on time, and you didn't make any missed, after 20 years, that payment would disappear. And if you were to rent, you continue to rent forever, and they'd raise the price on you for the rest of your life. Of those two options, which one of you have taken? Yeah. The same reason why you bought your house is the same reason why you're going to go solar. You hit them with that, and they're like, shit, you're right. Ah, you know, I don't know about going through. Okay, Mr. Customer, do you rent your television? No, that's stupid. Do you rent your cars? No, why would I rent my car? So why rent your electricity? Yeah, the same water bottle. <laughs> so the same reason why you buy things is the same reason buy electricity, buy your power. Because back in the day you couldn't do this, now you can. There's programs, the government's incentivizing you to do it. Let's not wait until there's a panel shortage and even if you want it, you couldn't get it. Which then leads me into my next thing. You guys know about panel shortages, right? So with all this happening, there's a serious issue with getting panels in the United States. November and December, we're gonna run out. And it's gonna be hard. Companies are scrambling. You don't hear about it, because we're selling it, but behind closed doors, people are freaking out. I've seen multiple houses, like four or five within the day, they just have the brackets up. I saw them. Yeah. So yeah. Send me the addresses. Yeah. Send me the addresses. Yeah. So. Hey, I'll tell you. So that's the thing. Your job is to convey, convey to them. Everyone that's looking in the future and can see this is going to be a big deal. They're getting it in now because we do have panels in stock. But unfortunately, the longer we wait, the proactive people are going to take advantage of it. And that could lead you into six, eight months of waiting for panels and six to eight months of payments out the window by throwing it towards your utility company. Because every payment you make to the utility company is like throwing money in a dumpster. It's just a waste. Just like if I were to tell you, hey, you can't buy a house, you got to rent for another year, that's a full 12 months of payments that could go down to paying your home. Would you be happy if I told you you had to rent a house before you can buy it? No, you'd be pissed. So the panel shortage is a real deal. Companies are scrambling for it. And you express that to the client that it's a first come, first serve. You seem like a nice lady, but unfortunately if the panels are out, the panels are out and there's nothing we can do about it until we get the shipment in. There's huge blockades sitting in Long Beach, California right now with ships lined up for miles to drop their stuff off. Google it, Google it. Don't fucking listen to me, it's real. Think I'm kidding? So like, say come November, what are we like advising? Well, uh, Biden released the tariff on the panels. So you guys familiar with what that was? So a lot of the reason why these panels are getting caught up was because um, there was a circumventing of panels from China into the United States by going through um, a, a country in Southeast Asia. I think it was Taiwan or another. I think those, that's the one who they're having war with. Was it Taiwan? Yeah, so what ended up happening was is they got around this tariff and then now the government found out, so they're putting a stop to it. Biden passed a law to get them into the United States, but still we're gonna be running short because all of these people are getting solar. And so that's why the first come first serve, they're not making enough to get over here to the United States. And another pretty cool fact is of the percentage of homes that can qualify for solar, do you think the ones that have solar are going up or do you think that they are going down? So to give you guys a little peace of mind and job security, the amount of homes that have solar in the United States are actually dropping. Why? They're building so many homes. And they're so small. Yeah. So that's the thing. They're building so many homes, we can't keep up with it. That's why we're going to get such a huge flood into this marketplace. That's why you guys got to pay attention and not text people when you should be listening, Mr. Alex Jolly. I'm watching you. So... That's what I'm saying, we gotta be professional, okay? And then, let's say, all right, I'm Encore, shit. Can't beat you guys, all right? Everyone went solar, fine. F you, you guys don't like me? I gotta maintain your grid, right? So those wires, I still have to make sure that wire goes to your house. You don't wanna pay me, fine. F you guys. You know what I'm gonna do? I got so much money, I'm gonna go with my little politician over here, and I'm gonna say, hey. <laughs> He's eyeing you. He's like... So this is what's happening, just so you guys have a visual. I'm, I'm Encore. I'm mad at you guys. Okay, you guys all left me, fine. I'm going to go to the politician. I'm going to say, hey, look, buddy. 
all these clients have solar, I don't make any money, but I still have to make sure power goes to their house. How is that fair to me for me to service all of these people? What's he gonna say? Okay, you're right, we're gonna pass a bill and let's see what happens. Who knows what NEM 3.0 is? So, this politician, he likes nice things. How can you tell? <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> that is. What, what kind of douche would wear that? <laughs> so, so I know, I know this guy, and I want to get my, my bill passed, right? So I'm going to go to him, and I'm going to take this $100 bill. Is that your face on there? <laughs> No, it's Oscar. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this thousand dollar bill and I'm gonna see about getting this law passed. Why? Because I'm tired of losing money. And guys, if that's not enough urgency to get these customers to go, because once they're in, they're grandfathered in. It's happening in California. The law right now in California, I sell there so I know. I went to a protest. The other day, for you guys following me on Instagram, I showed up three hours late and missed everything, but F me. <laughs> but they're trying to stop it, and it's going to be between 6 and $8 uh, for every kilowatt. So like I said, there goes the savings immediately. And that's scary. And that happened over there. And with everybody here, what do you think is happening next? Just like people moving to Texas from California, some of their nonsense is going to come over to as well. <laughs> Stupid Californians, man. They're flashy shit. Get them out of here, huh? So, with that being said, you got to know these laws. You start bringing them up to customers, that's going to build urgency. They're going to be like, dude, you're making a lot of sense. Like, you're a freaking professional. You know what the hell you're talking about. The last guy was just talking about saving money. He had commission breath. He was trying to make a 10 grand a deal. This guy, dude, there's... You actually are, you've been studying this, huh? You know what you're talking about. Like, that's the big thing. It's just explaining that. Utility companies pushing back on net metering 3.0. Having an article, handing that to them, showing them. Like, guys, it's going to happen. You think Encore is just going to take these L's? No, they're going to come back fighting. It's not bad right now. Texas just started solar two years ago. Not bad. But it's going to be. You'll get a couple laydowns. And a couple of easy deals, but it's going to get harder. And Encore is going to end up getting pissed because they've got so much money right now. If it's a couple guys at the back, I lose them, whatever, man. I'm rich. I'm balling out. It's cool. But when half the room goes, they start paying attention. That's when our job starts getting harder. That's when we got to rely. Once the savings goes, imagine you take someone's solar bill and their average electricity bill every month is 300 bucks a month. And now to go solar, it's 370 Think they're going to think twice about going solar? Never. Eh, like, ah, no, I'm good. Thank you. So that's what I'm saying. It's happening, and it's going to come. It's going to get hit, and you guys are going to be like, damn, dude, what did that freaking pesky guy talk about? That's it. It's real. So those are the three things to build urgency and takeaways. If you guys are watching this, this is how I explain it to a customer. I'm just educating them. Like, there's no real hard sell that you have to do it. This is pretty easy. Like, I sold door-to-door -door alarms for like 12, 13 years. And like, you had to really persuade people to get an alarm. This, if you bring up the facts and you get them to agree with it by showing statements and showing articles, it's a no-brainer. Like these people already own their homes, they own their cars, they own their television. They just didn't know they can own their utility company until we came by. And everybody wants to do it. It just doesn't make sense to them. Like nobody here, like if you knock on somebody's doors and they say they don't want solar, they don't, they don't understand it. They just don't comprehend how it works. Everybody wants solar. And if they don't, they're going to end up paying for their neighbor to get solar because they're stuck in the death spiral. So at least, get the pen, at least get the benefits and the perks of having solar rather than just paying for everybody else to have them. That'll really sting them. So that's what I'm saying, guys, is these logical points I'm bringing up, I'm convicted, I'm looking them out in the eye, you guys can feel this. Like, that's the conversation that you're going to have with these clients where they're going to be like, damn, bro, this guy knows what he's talking about. Unlike the other 15 companies we talked to, those dudes were just out trying to make a quick buck. Separate yourself. So, urgencies and takeaways. Building your, to get them done, get it done quick. Takeaways. Mr. Customer, one of three things are going to happen today. Number one, you're going to commit to owning your own power with solar panels. Two, you're going to recommit to Encore. 
and you're going to be stuck renting your power where they could raise the rate on you whenever they want and there's no end date and you have to pay for them for the rest of your life. Or number three, you want to get solar and unfortunately you don't qualify for it and then you're stuck with number two. My job is to see which category you fall into. And the problem that's going to happen is let's say everybody ends up getting solar in a certain part of town, that grid can only take on so much electricity. It pulls off a lot right now, but imagine if every home is pumping in electricity into a 130 year old electrical infrastructure. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to blow up. Who knows what's happening in Hawaii right now? Hawaii shut off net metering. Why? Because there's so much power being pushed on the grid during the day and so much being sucked off at night that they can't even utilize it anymore. So that's why we explain to these customers, hey, unfortunately, even if everybody in the world got solar, it can only cap out at a certain amount until they improve the grid enough. And that's going to take 20 or 30 years. That's why they have the 10-year plan. They can't just slap solar on everybody's roof because that would fry the grid. That's why they're spacing it out over 10 years, give enough people to do it, they start making the updates here and there, and then eventually, boom, mandate when the grid can facilitate it. But right now it can't. You know in Arizona, who's ever sold in Arizona before? Yeah, there's certain parts of the, the city that once they reach their quota of homes that can get solar, it's it. No more. You're done. You're stuck with the utility company. Because if you have so much power, it's going to blow up your grid, and you're done. So these are all talking. Well, who knew about any of this stuff? Some of you guys might a little bit, but I'm telling you, the more that you study and learn this stuff, and you bring it up to the customer, stuff sells itself. You just got to know it. That's why you're here. So let's go into the next slide. So that's the third. You build enough urgencies, takeaways, they're going to do it. The fourth is build pain. Write this down. People buy from one or two reasons. Number one, because they love something, or number two, because it solves a problem. So if they already, if they love solar, would they already have it? Yeah. I mean, if they truly loved it, they'd have gotten it. They've had enough time in the marketplace now to get it. So now the customers that we're going to, we have to solve problems. That's what we're doing. And the reason why they don't have solar at the moment Write this down is because there hasn't been a big enough problem with their current situation for them to go to solar. The reason why they haven't gone with the last five or 10 guys is because they haven't brought up enough problems in their current situation and urgency to get them to do it. The average sales rep will bring up two to three points of urgency and building value and that's it. When realistically, you need to drop about seven or eight points of urgency and pain and value to get them to switch. Otherwise, they're going to stay with where they're at. So how do you build pain in your process? So you can talk about what the value panels provide. This is what the beginning sales rep does. They talk about all the perks of solar. You do not sell the plane, you sell the destination. Stop selling the fucking plane. They don't give a shit what panels go on their roof. They don't care about the inverter. They care about the destination. Sorry to get vocal with you guys, but I get passionate about this stuff because we're not selling the right product. People are not passionate about panels. Why? Go ask 10 people what type of panels they have and what type of inverters. <laughs> <laughs> guys, they don't know, they don't care. What do they want? They want the zero bill and the fixed payment. Those are the benefits. Fixed payment, energy independent, help the planet. I mean, you know, California, that's more of a big thing. Texas here, not as much. It takes pressure off the grid. Those are the big things, right? But how can you get a customer to really shift from their current situation to a new one? Is you have to build so much pain, right? That's why pain is number one. Let me give you an example. I'm bleeding out. In 30 seconds, I have, I will die and my man Looney over there has a Band-Aid. And why this is important is, is if he has a Band-Aid and he starts building rapport with me and building credibility, doing takeaways, and I have 30 seconds to live, do you think I care about any of that? No. no. If the pain is big enough, I will pay any price to solve that problem. Take any money you want, I need that Band-Aid or I'm gonna die. So 
So that's why this is at the pinnacle of the most important part of your sales process. If you do not build pain in your current customer situation, they're gonna continue where they're at and they're gonna to continue to rent their power until their bills double or triple. And when their bills double and triple, that's when we're not gonna be able to make enough money because they're gonna go on the internet and they're gonna go buy from somebody else and shop around. The reason why we get paid so much is because they're not on the market for solar and we have to paint the image of the pain being so much that they need to do it with us right now and right then so that they never have to deal with it in the future. Because when their bills go up that high and they start shopping and they have like seven or 10, 15 different offers, who's ever been in one of those before? Not fun. We take people off the market and put them into it. That's why we get paid what we get paid. So how do we get them into it? It's by building pain. The grid, you gotta know what you're selling. You're not selling panels, you're selling a solution to a 130 year old infrastructure that has no solution. There's no fixing the grid, guys. The solution we're selling is the grid. The reason why their rates are gonna keep going up, the reason why they're gonna be hit with tax and fees is because all they can do is put Band-Aids on this grid and the cost of inflation keeps going up and up and up. There's nothing they can do about it. It's not Encore's fault, the grid. And people give shit to the utility company. Sometimes I bag on them, but the utility company just uses the infrastructure. They just have a bad product. It's 130 years old, there's nothing they can do. And anything that old, do you think it requires a lot of maintenance? It's a lot of money to maintain that. So that's why the government is paying for people to get solar, because it takes pressure off of that. And so, know the grid. Inflation's real, it's scary. A house that cost people $4,000 a month, six months ago, now costing people seven, 8,000 a month. Gas prices, look at that. I live in uh, LA, gas prices are seven, eight bucks a gallon. Yeah, it's no fun. So that's what I'm talking about. You start relating to real time problems, okay? And then insecurity, hey, if your rate, if your electricity bill went up to a thousand bucks a month, do you think that would throw off your budget at all? It did it with gas. You gotta rob Peter to pay Paul to make these bills done. Do you wanna be put in a situation where it's too late? Or do you wanna jump ahead of this and get this done now while it's at a lower price? Because there's, there's two things I can promise you. Number one, that your payments are gonna keep going up for your utility company. And number two, the cost of panels are gonna keep going up. So the longer we wait, the more it's gonna cost you. And honestly, I'd prefer the longer we wait because that's when I make more money. So let's get it out of the way now so we're not put in a situation where six months down the line, my quote has now doubled because of inflation. And you think I'm kidding? Go try to get a realtor and say you wanna buy a house six months ago and tell them you wanna pay the same price. What would the realtor do? Laugh, Laugh in your face. Two or four months yeah. Let's say you slept for six months, you go to the gas station, the price is six bucks a gallon. You tell the, you tell the gas station attendant, hey man, I, I, I wanna pay that $3 a gallon. What do you think the gas station attendant would do? Bye. Laugh. Same thing for me, is unfortunately with the way inflation's going, good leap, you guys all sell good leap, right? They just raise their rates. The quotes that you guys just did for a customer, gone. Stips, sorry, no more. What you quoted people a month ago is gone. It's gone up. It's no joke, it's real. Tell these people that. Don't, Mr. Customer, don't put me in a situation where you still gotta think about it and call me back in two months and this payment's gone up 20 bucks a month. Please don't do that to me. Let's get the process started. It's gonna happen. And the interest rates aren't stopping, guys. They're trying, the Fed's doing a lot to try to stop it. But because that tax credit went up, you know what else is gonna go up? Dealer fees. You know who wins on this whole process? Goodly, Mosaic. Sucks. Sucks, guys. That savings gone. So unfortunately, the best time to do this is while you're sitting across from me at the table right now because unfortunately it's only gonna go up. And you had these conversations. Imagine if you're a customer right now and you just sat through my last 20 or 30 minutes explaining how this works. What the hell are they gonna say besides that? <laughs> they tell me no, they're gonna look ridiculous. And the thing is, is why? Because my depth of my conviction is more powerful than the peak of my logic. I'm giving you guys a logical statements right now, 
but I'm so damn convinced that they're going to get this that they just believe it. I have an evangelical mission to get panels on their roof. I am sent here by God to put fucking panels on their roof. That's right. People love that. And it's true. Have you ever talked to somebody that just believed in something so much? I remember I talked to, it was some guy who was selling like fruit from those auto ship companies that they would sell, send vegetables to your house. And it was just this hippie, like this 25 year old guy from Berkeley. And he was just talking about how all organic vegetables being shipped directly to your house. I'm like, bro, you love vegetables, huh? He's like, bro, this is the sickest thing ever. I bought it and I never ate any of them. <laughs> but the dude was just so bought into what he was doing, man. I just believed it. And that's why we're so lucky. Imagine if we were selling Kirby vacuums or like meat, like selling meat door to door. Like shit, dude, that'd suck. We are so fortunate. Why? Three reasons. Solar, who's it good for? The customer, it's good for you, and it's good for the environment. Unfortunately, in your life, you'll be put in situations where all three of those don't come into play. And you're gonna have to look at yourself in the mirror and sell your ethics and morals to make a dollar. And it sucks. Imagine if you sell whale oil. There's a lot of bad products out there that are expensive, a lot of really good things. But we are so fortunate, guys, that we sell a product that you can ram it down somebody's throat and they're gonna thank you for it. And you can sleep good at night because 30 years from now, you've made an impact on this planet. As much as you don't wanna believe it or think about it, every panel we put up on somebody's house is gonna make an impact on this planet one way or another. And that's a good feeling, you know? I mean, if you've ever driven through LA and fly down and then all of a sudden you see that big layer of smog and shit, it's disgusting. So when I'm standing outside of my eight foot tall, eight, eight stories tall mansion in Beverly Hills and I'm just hit with smog in my face, it's disgusting, guys. <laughs> so sad. And the six women that I have next to me rub my feet, they're just coughing the whole time. It's like, so sad. it's disgusting. So it's ter guys, it's disgusting. So please, it's terrible, man. God, it sucks. <laughs> Here. My Ferrari gets eight miles to the gallon. It's just disgusting, okay? I hate it. Ugh. I'm just kidding. I live with my mother. But it saves electricity, okay? But you have solar. Yeah, she doesn't qualify. Oh. Hey. Oh, she don't qualify. <laughs> what? She doesn't like the look of it. Give me a break. <laughs> looks better on roof. Yeah, got four bodies right there. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, uh, funny, funny story about my solar. So I, I bought a Hyundai Sonata, and the hybrid version has solar panels on the roof. It's the first car that actually has it. So they're made by LG because Honda is Korean. So I got matching um, solar panels for my house, for my car. So it's pretty sick. <laughs> and then, oh, of course. And, and what's funny is I bought, I bought the pan, LG panels are like four times more expensive. And then literally I got them on my roof and then LG goes out of business. Just because you bought it? No, I don't know why. I was like, fuck, dude. It sucks. So, so. Like I said, let's do a recap. Four levels. Okay, then we're gonna go into some Q and A's and we'll rock it out. The lowest level, hey, we're almost done. Pay attention. I promise, man, this is good shit, I'm telling you. Stuff works. I've made money. I'll show you my bank account. So that's rapport. Second, trust and credibility. Your friends trust you, you're credible, you have rapport with them, but they don't buy. Okay? Sorry. Boom. Next, urgency. Takeaways. Oh, Danny does solar. I buy from him next year when I get a little extra money. Mm. Yeah, no problem. Never happens. Still gonna need some extra money though. Yeah, exactly. And then the fourth, this is the part that really makes it move for you, moves the needle, is the pain. Without pain, they're gonna stay in their current situation. My friend who's paying 200 bucks a month won't care until his bill's five, 600, or I get in there and I start laying down, laying down the law. So that's why those four levels, when done, 
an ascending order is really going to help you close a deal. And when you get to a closing table and you're not getting enough buy-in from the customer, you can go through and remember, hey, when I left, did I build enough urgency? Did I build enough pain? Did I build a rapport so that they don't sell it and they cancel or some guy comes by and flips it? Or then do I build um, you know, the trust and credibility? Do they know all these things? I hand them an article. So now going forward, you guys have a metric to measure how you did on each process. So when you leave your house, you can think back, okay, this, told, this guy told me no. Of those four, where did I not hit? Oh, boom, didn't build the legitimacy and I didn't build enough pain for him to switch. This is all techniques that you guys can implement immediately and know as a measure how well you've done right after you've left the house. And that's what's so cool about it. It's very simple. You guys can implement your own urgencies. You can implement your own pain, however you're currently selling, but this is a tool that you guys can utilize immediately to start remembering exactly where you lost a deal and where you got it. Makes sense? Good, simple, easy. You guys are already doing a lot of this, but you got to put it into a system where it's teachable. Now the cool part is you have a new guy that you want to teach how to do this, because guess what? All of you should. If you're only selling, you're being selfish. You're only thinking of yourself. You make good money, but you haven't taught someone how to do it. You're being selfish. So cut that shit out. Okay? There's a lot of people who are working dead in jobs. And for you to sit here and make this much money and not tell somebody about it is, is very disrespectful. And it's not appropriate, and I hope that you guys go out there and start spreading the word. Because think about if you never got told about this job, where your life would be at. I was a dead-end comedian in Hollywood, semi-professionally for eight years. I did comedy sports, and I was making, on average, the best comedians in L.A. that were performing made $18,000 a year. I made that this week. And if someone didn't tell me about this job, I'd want to kick their ass. And if I could go back in my, my life, and I could think of you know, things I could have done better was to bring more friends along the way. I was afraid that I'd sound like a pyramid scheme, that my friends wouldn't like me. Now my friends are broke still living with their parents because I was too big of a puss to tell them about this. And it's sad. They're living with their parents. They don't have the life that they could have been living. It's because I was selfish and I didn't pass on this message. And a lot of times as you step into leadership, you got to teach people and that's why I'm giving you guys these techniques. Tonight you learn from two ways. One from me teaching you, and then the second way is from you teaching someone else. So for you guys to truly appreciate what I've taught you tonight is take it and teach it. This is your information. I don't do this, this is not copyright. Take this information and teach it because that's the way you're gonna make an impact on this planet by giving more than you receive. As you guys know, I was a salesman, right? I was crushing it. I did very, very well, but I realized on my deathbed, if I kept doing what I was doing, I'd have a lot of money and no friends. And I wouldn't have made an impact on people's lives. So I made a shift that, hey, I was managing at the time four offices, like 150 reps, so nothing too crazy. But if I wanted to reach out bigger and have a bigger impact on the planet, I'd have to get my message out there and start training more. So I started Knockstar, and I think now we have over 6,000 clients. So it's been a fucking amazing journey in 18 months. So, you know, we specifically focus on solar. And as you guys know, like, you know, this is something that I've taken very, very serious. And this is my ethical duty to teach you guys this. Because as a kid, I no one taught this stuff. Just so you know, there was not open trainings. If you work for this company or not, the only way that you got information was from your manager. Now you guys have open access. My Instagram drops more freaking nuggets than the Denver Nuggets. Like, <laughs> you can get information for free. I was not the funniest joke, but thank you for laughing. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying, guys. And so you guys now have this tool. You can show this to your people. Teach somebody. There's a driver, your Uber drivers, people working at restaurants. Like you heard John, he was working at a restaurant. Now look at him. Dude's Gucci down to his socks. <laughs> now obviously there's, you know, depends on how you want to spend your money. But <laughs> that's what I'm saying is get this out to people, guys. And, and that's why solar is such a good thing because I right, pay, get, <laughs> So that's the thing, is it's good for you, it's good for the customer, and good for the planet. And if I can help you guys sell more solar, maybe my small impact on this planet will mean something. And that's what I'd share with you guys, is pass this information on, because one day there'll be someone thanking you for the opportunity that you gave them. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Who 
Who's new to solar in here? Raise your hand. Dude, fuck yeah. Okay. okay. So when I first started, to be good at something, you have to relive past wins in your mind. The reason why I'm confident on the doors is because I've sold a shitload, and so I'm confident because of that. How do you, are you guys cool if we keep going or do you want to, okay, just make sure. So, pizza's on the way, oh boy. So, you're new at this job, you haven't sold a lot, so where can you draw your confidence from, okay? So here's your life. Here's your job. You don't have any wins, you're new. You haven't sold anybody, you don't have any confidence. Okay? And this is your life. The first step on anything is just get sold on what you're selling. Your conviction will outweigh all of your techniques. So the talk that I had tonight, and I expressed that, do you see why I'm so convincing? Is because I believe I'm on an evangelical mission to put panels on this customer's house, and they feel that. So start reading into the grid. When you realize how awesome we do for this planet, you will start being able to telegraph that information to your customers. So really get sold on what you're doing. Start reading on solar, look at it this way. Would the government put this much money into it if it was something bad? No. So you have no wins in your, jo in your job, right? No wins. In life, you gotta start looking at ways or times where you ex were extraordinary. I had a great example. One of my clients, he's in Florida. He was a professional pitcher in the major leagues, but he was sucking at solar. I had a conversation with him. I'm like, bro, how were you a professional athlete that people spent their, who's, everyone's pretty much played baseball here before, right? All of us have grown up. He was at the pinnacle, one of the best in the world to play baseball. And I'm like, how are you so good here and then you're sucking at this. The same dedication and commitment you went into studying baseball, you're gonna to have to put towards your job. And the effort that you put towards that, were you eventually good at it? Yes, okay? How much effort and how many years have you put towards this job? And then you start seeing the connection, right? Ah, oh, shit, I spent 17 years playing baseball and I've spent two weeks doing this job and everyone's telling me no. Like, duh, guys, that's gonna happen. It's part of the game. You have to respect the learning curve. So if you've had wins in your life, start reminding yourself, bro, I was a professional athlete. So I told him every time you go out there, start acting like a pro baseball player. Wear your hat and start going out there and acting as if you were a pro. You're pulling confidence from your life and pushing it into your job. You pull wins that you've had from your life and do it into your job. If you were an all-star quarterback, homecoming king, in high school I was the homecoming king, and I kept reminding myself every day when I was knocking doors, bro, I'm the homecoming king. I got this. <laughs> I got this. I was like, bro, these guys are lucky to get me. <laughs> these guys are lucky to talk to me. And not everybody had that experience, but you've got to find something in your life that you were good at and remind yourself, bro, I was good at that. I'm a great fucking dad. My kids love me. My customers are gonna love me. You have to sell yourself on that. Because all of you guys have done something amazing in your life, and you've put the time to get there. It's the same thing that's gonna happen in this job, just be patient. You can't cheat the learning curve. I've done this for 15 years, this is all I know. My first year, if I were to come up here and do this, do you think there'd be a little bit of a difference? Same thing. So that's why, go through your life, Write down wins, 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 wins. List 10 things that you freaking kicked ass at. I got a baseball in Cooperstown Hall of Fame. I hit a home run when I was 12 years old in the Little League World Series. We're fifth out of the whole country. I was a right fielder and I uh, got a baseball in Cooperstown. Boom, that's a win. Boom, little Danny. I remember that. I had a big afro back then and my hair would pop out the back. You can see it on my Instagram. It's out there. It's pretty funny. So write down, if you're struggling to feel successful at this job, think of all the wins that you've had. And as you're out there working, remind yourself over and over and over again that you can do this. It's called the self-esteem balloon. When you go out to work, you get out of a correlation, you're all fired up, you're excited, and then you just get shit on by everybody. Boom. No, F off, F off and then your emotional state, you just start dragging ass, okay? Your job as a professional is to hype yourself up. 
If you don't have wins from sales you've made or competitions you've won, start thinking of stuff in your life where you were extraordinary at and remind yourself that. If you're a parent, you're very lucky. You know, because someone loves you. Someone cares about you. And it's your ethical duty to go out there and provide for that child. And if you don't have a kid, you will one day. And think about how they would be looking at their father or mother right now when they started getting discouraged. That's tight. Uh, that's, that's tough. So, relive wins. And then remind yourself. It'll come out. Eventually you'll get it. Like, eventually you'll pick this up. Just like learning how to speak a language, learning how to talk to people. Like, it's hard at first, but once you get it, you got it. And we're very lucky we sell an amazing job. Imagine, you know, we're trying to teach you guys to sell timeshares. <laughs> that suck. And if you, tell, if you sell timeshares, get the hell out of here. <laughs> so, life wins. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great question. Let's give this man a prize over here. Tanner, what do we got? All right, we got a prize. We're going to give out some prizes we're here. Gonna, we're going to do, do a raffle for a 64 okay. nine generation Wi-Fi Plus cellular iPod. And this one, we're just going to like, Dan is going to ask a good, a good question. Whoever raises their hand and answers it, I'm just going to throw it to you. Okay. Throw it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it to you. I'm going to hand it to you. I'm gonna hand All it to you. right, so Gently. I'm going to think of a question. And then uh, we're passing around this right now. This is for the raffle. Uh, if you do not work for Lumio currently, fill out your name and your info. If you don't? And if you've worked for Lumio for less than three months, put your name and your info here too. Oh, Everybody yeah. else has worked here more than three months. You guys already have a ton of money in your bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so we'll do a raffle in 30 minutes after Q&A. So first question for the Bluetooth. Who is paying attention? Let's see, who is listening and focusing? Who can best articulate what the death spiral is? Hands up first with the glasses, sorry. In the back, you're quick. So half this room is gonna go solar, the other half is not, they're gonna be stuck with the utility company. Those people are gonna to have to increase their rates and they're gonna to have to pay the burden of these going solar. Oh so my if you God. go now, you're, you're the elite, you're the selected, if you don't, you're going to be paying for them. Oh, my Let's God. Go. Death spiral, baby. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Took it right off the chest. Took it off the chest. Okay. Oh, break it out, break it out. I can hold it. <laughs> Not the Oscar one, no, that's, that's my private selection. I got a $100 bill here, I just got off my printer at home. <laughs> okay, let's see a good question. Mm, let me see, what can I pull up? I'm gonna make it a good one. Let's see who was really listening. What are the two things that you want to talk about with a customer? Saw you first. Physicality or reality? <sighs> Give this man $100. Round of applause. <laughs> oh, wait, oh. I, know. <laughs> I know salesmen. <laughs> Something physical in their universe. If you're talking to a client and you go into their house, you start talking about something at their kitchen table, something that they're proud of. Not like something dumb like a coffee cup or a mug or like a glass of water. Something that they're proud of. People love showing off their stuff. So talk about that. Let them talk about that. Boom, they've got some kind of crazy art form. Start talking about that. Boom, boom, boom. You see a big Trump sign out front, what is your ass talking about? <laughs> Have you ever talked to a Trump supporter about Trump? <laughs> They'll buy anything after you start talking about Trump. <laughs> hey, man. I don't fuck. Bro, Biden sucks, huh? He's like, yeah, I fucking hate Biden. Ah! <laughs> Telling you, it's the, it's, it's the truth, man. It's the freaking truth. I got a gift for a guy with a power shirt on. There we go. We got a shirt right here? All right. I'm going to toss it over here. Another company uh, shirt on, so we're gonna have the first There we go. There you go. You got work, workout clothes, baby. Okay, let's go. All right. <laughs> Danny, hit him with the hit him with another good question. All right, so we got another question. For some um, AirPod Pros. AirPod Pros. Let's see right here. Dude, I just buy one two at a time. 
Okay. When um, talking about urgent, urgency, what are the utility companies going to do to fight back? So I'll him first, right here. Okay, and what is that? Hold on. Well, essentially, I mean, obviously they're losing. Customers. I'm the customer, so explain it to me. So yeah, as a customer, the more customers they lose, they're losing out on more money. So obviously they want to combat that. And that's how they're presenting this NEM 3.0, where they're kind of closing the window for folks to make the switch. What they're going to do, obviously, connection fee, uh, make it where instead of saving, you actually have to pay them more to kind of balance that out. Mm, and what are you going to hand me to prove your statements? Some articles, posts, and uh, websites. Get this guy some help. Bro. He does He's sharp. Time, bro. So, do, <laughs> so to get your client to go forward with it, you got to build urgency to get them to do it today. You start explaining this. You start talking about any in California, and then you start saying, "Okay, cool. There's a lot of things from California heading to Texas." They're gonna laugh. They're gonna be like, "Yep." Yeah. So, do you think these utility companies are enjoying losing all these clients? No. No. So, what do you think they're going to do? Name, phone number for the raffle. Starting, starting this. And we'll be a raffle here in about 15, 20 minutes. See after questions. So, we might go to 10 guys. So, button the hatches. It's going to be good. I promise you. So, um, yeah, NEM, important. Go study that. Learn it. Use this. You got to be professional. You got to know what the heck you're talking about. Next, let's jam on another question. This guy's on fire tonight. He didn't even know what his question was. He just got, there we go, give it to me. Well, I had it earlier, yeah. Oh, so when you're talking about like the whole NEM thing earlier with California? Yep. I know this is kind of just lightbulb off my head. With all the, like, the current companies, what they used to have like credit rollovers. I noticed that like none of them have it anymore. Mm -hmm. Is that like kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, so if we're, what he's referring to is some companies will give you credit if you get solar towards their next bill, a lot of companies, and now a lot of these utility companies are not doing that. So take time to educate yourself. This is a Texas market where it's an unrestricted um, for uh, utility companies. So there's a bunch of different companies out here. You gotta know everything about these utility companies you come to the door. You gotta know their, their, their net metering agreements, how the rollovers work, because what ends up happening is, is if you just remain ignorant to it and sell solar and you don't know how it works, that's how you start getting a bad reputation. And that's how you start ruining it for everybody because you haven't taken the time to do your research and be a professional. So take the time, study. The cool part is, is when you study at this job, you get paid for it. TexasPowerGuide.com. They update it almost every day, uh, but you're right. People like Rhythm, Green Mountain, right, who are once doing those rollover plants, aren't anymore. Uh, but right now we still have a couple out there. Reliant, they redid a new one. Uh, Pulse, they redid a new one. It's not on their website, but if you call on hold, you can get that. So people can still get a negative bill and get those rollover credits. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of good resources here at Lumio. Yeah, great question. <laughs> Good question. So have you ever thought to like try to partner with a real estate agent or like a company to try to see if y'all can get together? Because obviously like if you're with working the, with, with that, that energy company, like a real estate. No, I know what you're like saying. Seeker, yeah. So, um, just because, I mean, obviously if we're selling homes out here, just like by experience. Yeah. Say if me and you are part, like mm -hmm. we're like friends. Like, hey, okay, I sold this home for whatever, three hundred fifty thousand. I'm gonna be like, hey, I know this person. You know, they're gonna give you a good discount on this rate. You know, I'm gonna give you their card. Like, go ahead and talk to them. Yeah. Like, how would you work with that? So, like, so the question is, is partnerships and referral agreements. So me, I was a volume seller and I wasn't afraid to knock. So I typically didn't invest too much time because you'll get maybe one or two, three deals a year for it. And so the thing is, is you gotta do a trade off. How much volume are you selling versus the investment of time you do in these partnerships? They pan out, but they're not as effective as going out knocking or buying a huge lead source. So what I would say, depending on your volume, if you're doing three to five a month, 100% find a real estate agent and try to work that angle. But the thing is with real estate agents, you have to be top of mind. They have meetups every, like two or three weeks where you can go in there and you can sponsor one of their meetups and buy food for them and do a presentation. So that's a great way to do that. I've done that before. Um, and then on top of that too, they have welcome packets, finding a way to get into their welcome packets. But the most effective way of doing it, I used to, you know those signs that people have when they for sale and sold? I would go partner up with those guys and when they move in, they'd hand them 
a, a, a card, a brochure, but it never ends up panning out as well as you think it does. Yeah, and they're they referred to as like B&I groups. So I'm in it, but my, uh, my uh, brother's wife represents my seat in B&I because she'll get maybe two or three deals a year out of that. It's not worth my time. I'll go out and slam that in. So you got to really realize what type of time usage that you're doing and if it's worth the investment for it. I'm asking about it. Yeah, yeah it's it's just like selling, guys. You gotta you gotta work the relationships. You can't just go into a group and then just expect them to send referrals. It's still another sale. You have to sell them on it. So that's why you gotta judge the pros versus cons. That's cool. And like I said, guys, and I'm gonna get to you in a sec. I see you back there, big dog. Be vocal about it. If you're not posting on Instagram every quarter, I post. Hey, my name's Danny Pessy. I sell home solar products and home solar products accessories. Like from King of the Hill, Hank of the Hill, Hank King Hill. So I, every quarter I say that, reach out to me. And I do that every single quarter for the last 10 years. I've sold a bunch. So just let people know. If you guys go to my Instagram, you see what I do. My friends are like, bro, I want to get solar. Just being vocal about it. We sell a great product. Don't be embarrassed. We're not selling, you know, network marketing or anything like that. This is a pretty cool, pretty cool gig. Question. So my question is, do you sell batteries? No. I, I honestly, because I'm ignorant on it and I don't know enough, and I think batteries are the future. It's just I don't know enough about it and I don't talk about stuff that I don't know. If they want it, I'll sell it to them. And I do know enough of the basics that they're not going to power the whole house. It only works on a couple of the little sensor things on there. And then basically, it'll be enough to probably power a fridge and like a couple things for a few hours. But I, 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 I honestly don't. I just say, hey, the batteries in the future are going to be coming down substantially in price. So I, I could sell you it now, but I, I'd feel bad in like two, three years when they're half the price and you pay double for it. And I mean, honestly, it's if, if you really want it, I'll do it and I'll show you the prices on it. And then you got to make sure it fits in the, the loan cap and all that stuff. So it's, yeah, it don't, you need like six batteries. Cool. All right. A few more questions, guys. We're almost done. Uh, I know you mentioned like uh, having like a guy run uh, some ads for you for the videos yeah. or buying leads. Do you yeah. have a contact for someone that you would recommend? Um, yeah, I got to reach to me after. I'll connect okay. you with one of my guys. Okay, cool. Yeah. With leads, guys, understand they're just like knocking. A lot of them is I've spent a lot of money and it, a lot of them don't go through, but all you need is a couple to hit. So don't expect these guys just to magically put deals in for you. So they'll happen if you work them, but uh, of course, don't go in there expect to make a hundred thousand bucks. So let's go back to the, let's go back to the, the the drawing board. So bulletproofing your mindset. This is something that I was very very um, good at. I set a record in door to door uh, that there's like maybe five people in the world that's ever gotten close to touching. Um, and security, I sold 300 accounts on average for 10 years in a row, which is the pinnacle of like security sales. And security is like two times harder selling than solar. So to give you guys kind of an idea. So what you want to do is you want your mindset dialed in, right? So you want to get your head focused on selling. And what ends up happening is, is the more decisions you have to make, the more decision fatigue you have. So what I would do when I was working, I'd eat at the same place every single day for a full week. I'd go to the same restaurant, I'd eat the same breakfast, I'd listen to the same book, everything would be exact. I'd wake up at the same time, I'd go to bed at the same time. It was religious. I'd go to Chop House right on the way to Arlington as I'd head to Dallas-Fort Worth. If you guys know which one that is, I'd literally eat there every month for a full week. Then there was Firehouse and I'd, and I'd just rotate. So the thing is, is you wanna make sure your mindset's bulletproof. You start doing the exact same thing every single hour of every single week the same. And eventually what happens, you don't have to depend on motivation. Your discipline motivates you because all of a sudden, when it comes two o'clock after you ate, you feel good, oh, it's time to go out and work. If you're trying to motivate yourself every week, it gets fucking exhausting. Every day you gotta go out and exhaust because your schedule's all over the place. You have to decide where you're gonna go eat breakfast, then you gotta go decide where you're gonna eat lunch. Stop making decisions. Decide at the beginning of the week what you're gonna do, where you're gonna go, what area you're gonna work, and then your plan. All week I'm thinking about my area because I already know everything else. Everything else is planned. My food is delivered to my house. I don't clean my house. I have a maid clean it. I have cars cleaned. My, the guys come to my house and do all that. Everything's decided. And I hired an assistant and they take care of all the stuff that is pressing but not urgent. 
And so I pass that off to them. You guys are all making good money. If you're not hiring an assistant, you're costing yourself a lot. Stipulations, find someone in your office who's not selling as much as you, pass it off to them, let them handle it for a 10, 20% rep. Pass it off, go get more deals. Maximize your time on the doors. All that stuff, focus on doing it. So if you want a bulletproof mind, you have a bulletproof routine. And if you're not exercising, get a gym trainer. I'd go to the gym Tuesdays and went Thursdays, 8.30 a.m. I'd show up, he tells me what to do. I go home, I already know what I'm eating. Every time at the gym, if you're having to do your own workouts, you're shooting yourself in the foot. That's mental energy you could be thinking about your customers. I go there, all right, what do I do? Tells me what to do all day. Because then I go to customers' houses and I tell them what to do. That's the thing. So you gotta remember that is every decision you're making that isn't already pre-planned, that's taking away from your bulletproof mindset. So you have to focus on getting as much delegated so that all you're thinking about is eat, sleep, and breathe your customers. It's a scarcity mindset. And the reason why people cut corners is they think that this is not enough for that to go around. When you realize that there's so much opportunity, all we have to do is just not screw it up, it's a relieving fact. Guys, every single day that goes by, less and less people have solar. We are freaking on the best time ever. There's no need to lie to people because we sell a great product and service. So if you realize that there's no shortage of money, everybody in here could be worth $10 million and the marketplace wouldn't even blink. Everybody could sell 100 deals in here a year and it wouldn't even make a difference and you guys wouldn't even notice. How many people we got in here, like 100? So that's 100 times 1,000, what is that, 10,000 people? 100,000, do you know how many people live in Dallas? Bro, if all of us in here sold 100 accounts a year and got installed, that's not even like 1% of Dallas. And when you think of it that scale, what are we worried about? There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of income. There's no fear. I don't need to lie. Because if you don't want it, guess what? There's 5 million people out here. I just got to go find them. So no need to shortcut cut corners. And the thing is, is people cut corners when they don't have a playbook. This shit is ethical, it's polished, and it works. You don't need to do any shortcuts anymore. I gave you guys the playbook. Everything I've said tonight, you can go use that on the doorstep, and you can feel good at night knowing that you sold the right way. So that's the thing. You don't need to do it anymore. When people are unpolished, the people that are going to fuck it up aren't the ones in here, the ones out there that I just want to go make money and not give a shit about the client. Because you guys came here and you spent time to educate yourself and get better. And the material that you're using tonight, everything that I've said is, is, is true. It's all backed up by facts and it works. And so that's the thing is if you guys go and use this material immediately, you'll find out that you don't need to cut corners. You don't need to cheat. And why I tell you guys is to teach this stuff is to prevent those guys from ruining it. Because the thing is, is I sold security and I capped out at those numbers, two or $300,000 every year, maxed out. And with that income, like you can't really put money aside. Like with solar, you can. And I've been so thankful because I worked my fucking ass off my whole life. Like I was getting nervous, bro. After 13, 14 years, you're like, bro, when's this shit gonna hit? And then finally, I realized it's transitioning into solar was what hit and then it just blew up. And I'm so thankful because, you know, Solar security started my life, but solar saved my life because in terms of what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to make so much fucking money, and I'm going to make such an impact on this planet. I have a humanitarian project that I'm starting. The money that I make, I pour it back all into these events. So the thing is, I'm going to Costa Rica this year. I don't know if you guys follow my Instagram, but there was a guy that got caught in a customer's house, and a customer almost killed him. And uh, he grabbed the, the, he was at a sales, doing a presentation, selling him solar. Customer grabs him, throws him on the ground, I don't know what happened, and the guy went into a coma for two or three months, almost died, and you know, I was able to use my network to raise $20,000 to help the kid. So that's what I'm doing with this platform. That's what I'm doing with my commissions. I'm gonna buy better housing for people. I'm gonna be a good landlord. I wanna do good with this planet. So when you get your money and you're just thinking about cool shit to buy, that's fun, but eventually it gets boring. Eventually you start having all the cars, you have all the cool shit. Go do something good for the planet. Go to another country where they're drinking out of a fucking beat up cup. Like if you guys want to make an impact on that, it's called Knockstar Gives Back. Last year we went to uh, Peru, we went to Cusco, 
and we donated $60,000 to a school there, and we built a sustainable water supply for local um, Native Americans or Native Peruvians, and these guys were pooping in holes. When we left, they had a full-on water filtration system and a running bathroom. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. Get rich to do good. That's why. And if you get rich and you do it the right way, like, fuck, dude, it feels so much better. Because if you know these kids are having a water supply, this year we're going to Costa Rica, and we have about 50 slots available, so if you guys would love to go, I'd love to have it, whoever wants to join. But we're going to go down there and build another school for those kids. So it's really, really cool. That's, that's the shit that fires me up. And I know if I help you get rich, you can donate to those type of charities, and you can be a part of that. And that's, that's my big thing. Like, I'm good. Like, now I want you guys to do well. And uh, I get emotional about it because, sorry, I get emotional about it because I love this shit, you know, and, and, and I'm so passionate about this. And I love, like, the person that I've become through the doors. And uh, I know what lies on the other side of uh, what this can do for you. And so that's why I'm so passionate about this job. And yeah, I don't mean to cry and get emotional and stuff, but... Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking awesome, guys. So, you know, I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Uh. Yes. 